Well, hello there, folks. Welcome to the First United Methodist Church in Elkins, West Virginia YouTube channel. It is a pleasure to be with you today on Wednesday, June 24th. The month is almost over. It's hard to believe we are moving forward. Let's begin today's broadcast with a trivia question. For which type of tree was Lebanon well known? For which type of tree was Lebanon well known? I'll give you the answer at the end of the broadcast. And now for some good humor. How many of you played in your high school band? I did not. I wished that I would have. I began playing the guitar at an early age, but I didn't stick with it. One of the great regrets of my life. I've picked it up a time or two during my adult years, and uh, currently I'm not playing, but need to get back to that. Well, here's one that makes me think about our high school bands. The high school band was nervous, so was the new music teacher. As the band members were preparing for their first concert, the teacher told the kids that if they weren't sure of their part, just to pretend to play it. When the big night arrived, the proud parents waited expectantly. The teacher brought down the baton with a flourish, and lo, the band gave forth with a resounding silence. Evidently, everybody was nervous about their part and were going to pretend to play. Be careful what you ask for, right? I'm sure that the band director pulled it all together. I want to share a quick announcement. If you would like to pick up an upper room, you can do so today before 3. There are plenty left from yesterday. We'll make another opportunity next week if need be, but today until 3, you can do that right in front of the Family Life Center all the way next to the mahogany doors under the canopy right outside those doors. And now for today's passage, Acts 7, 54 to 60, a passage about Stephen. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Here Stephen is introduced to us briefly in Acts 6, 5. As a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. He was chosen, along with six others, to oversee the distribution of food to the widows. Evidently, there was a problem between the Greek-speaking Jews and the Hebrew-speaking Jews. The Greek widows were being overlooked in the food distribution, and this angered the Greek-speaking Jewish people, and a rift developed. So, the twelve apostles came together. Now, you might say, well, how could that be twelve? Because one was no longer Judas. Well, remember, early in Acts, they choose his replacement. I could have made that a trivia question. Do you know who his replacement was? It was Matthias. So now they've transitioned from disciple to apostle. I'll, I'll explain that here in a second. And they choose a way to deal with this. And that's how this turned out to be seven gentlemen chosen uh, for this great, great ministry. So let me just continue by mentioning a couple things about the setting here. Seven are chosen. Stephen leads the list. And these seven are named. Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. 
And these men were brought before the apostles who prayed for them and laid their hands on them. From this, the word of God spread, more believed, including some of the priests, which is remarkable. Now, Stephen, full of grace and power, produced great signs and wonders amongst the people. This got the attention of a group called the Synagogue of the Freedmen. They began to argue with Stephen, but they could not match his wisdom, and this frustrated them. So they stirred up the people, the elders, the teachers of the law, who got some other people to give false testimony about Stephen, accusing him of blasphemy. He was brought before the Sanhedrin, where he made an incredible defense of his faith. It was said that his face became like the face of an angel as he spoke. Now after his speech, he looked up into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus at the right hand of God. He called Jesus the Son of Man, a term that Jesus used of himself. As far as I know, it's the only time in Scripture that another person directly refers to Christ with this title. As a result, he was drug outside and stoned to death. And as the stoning was taking place, he asked God to receive his spirit. And he asked that God would not hold this sin against the perpetrators. Does any of this sound familiar? Six years after Jesus' crucifixion, 36 A.D., Stephen is stoned. He became the first martyr of the Christian church. And the people who threw their stones laid their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul, who gave his consent. That Saul would become Paul the Apostle. Stephen was also considered the first deacon in the Bible. The word deacon comes from a word that means to attend or to serve. There were six others, and maybe even Timothy himself was a deacon. The laying on of hands was a kind of ordainment for them to do their work. We ordain our deacons and our elders at annual conference as part of a big ceremony that the conference oversees. And the deacon and elder then become a member of the conference rather than a member of the church and are commissioned to go forth and serve on behalf of Christ in various settings, including the church. We can learn a few things from this, and then I'll close our broadcast. First of all, followers of Christ forgive like Christ. That's what really comes out to me. Stephen does exactly what the master did. Stephen showed himself to be a true apostle. A disciple is a follower. An apostle is one who is sent. There needs to be a transition from following to doing. We should not spend an entire life strictly learning and never doing. We should learn and put what we've learned to the test. We should take our lesson and apply them to living. It's good to continue learning. I'm a big advocate of lifelong learning, but there comes a time when we need to transition and practice what we've learned. Put it to the test and do it for the glory of God. Second, followers of Christ serve in whatever capacity Christ asks them to serve. Christ spoke to the apostles. The apostles chose seven men for this great task. And Stephen was willing to do whatever Christ wanted him to do. And, of course, there were other people who confirmed that. Third, followers of Christ overcome their fear of sharing their faith. We don't know if Stephen was ever afraid, but we do know he made a great defense. And it was because of the power of the Holy Spirit in him that he was able to give his testimony. The word says, stronger is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Remember that. Fourth, followers of Christ have the great assurance of a heavenly home. Stephen got to peer into heaven. He got to see God. He saw his beloved Savior. He knew where he was heading. That's a lesson for all of those who walk in faith. Fifth, following Christ is not always easy, and sometimes it's downright hard. It might lead to persecution, could lead to torture, could lead to death. But it's worth everything 
because the best is yet to come. Stephen shows us that too. Stephen had one foot in this world and one foot in the next. He lived the reality of this life, but he was informed from above. He did his ministry here as Christ did, but he had his destination firmly in mind. He was able to face the stoning because he knew where he was going, like Christ who faced the cross because he knew where his eternal home was. Fifth, I'm sorry, sixth and last, followers of Christ pursue prayer and live in the power of the Holy Spirit. Stephen was a man of prayer. It shows he prayed as he died. Stephen had the power of the Holy Spirit. Luke tells us that in Acts, he was able to do what he did because of a prayer life and because of the power of the Spirit. The more we pray, the more of Christ's presence is available to us. Um, put it this way, there is more spiritual power available when we follow the will of God through Christ. When we pray, when we're in the Word, when we serve. And Stephen is a great example of what God can do in a life. Now, I want to just close this all up by saying that the expectation that Christ has for all of us is that we learn and that we minister in whatever capacity God calls us to do. It might be on the front lines. It might be very much behind the lines. It might be well known, might not be known by anybody. I would invite you to be in prayer about that if you're not currently serving. And as our church gets back on track as far as a physical presence, we would love to plug you in if you're not already plugged in to the ministry here at First United Methodist or wherever God may call you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this lesson about Stephen, for the great truths of your word, for the power of the Holy Spirit that was in Stephen. We ask also that that power be available to us. Fill us full of grace and truth. Increase our faith. Lead us in this day and age. Be with all of those who are suffering, who are in harm's way. Grant peace and protection. Lord, I pray for an end to our pandemic and ask that you would chart the course ahead for all of us. Give us courage and peace. Continue to lead us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. And now the answer to our trivia question. For which type of tree was Lebanon well known? The cedar tree. Spelled differently than my last name. But I wouldn't mind spelling it the way that it is in the Bible. C-E-D-A-R-S. Cedars. Mentioned often in the Old Testament, cedar used in both David and Solomon's palaces, and the temple was almost completely paneled with it, known as an object of wealth, was aromatic, and could fight decay and infestation from bugs. Made it a special wood. Now you know. Have a great day today. Looking forward to joining you again this week. Hopefully tomorrow we'll meet at 1215 on Facebook and uploaded to YouTube shortly thereafter. God bless you. Take care.